Hey everyone, welcome back to Rose Stops Buying Stuff. Today we are doing my April, I keep wanting to say March, like I can't believe we're actually in May and this is the April um, money diary and check-in to let you know how my no buy budget year has progressed in the last month. Obviously this is like a completely different month to any other month that I've had so far. It's the first month we've been in a full lockdown and that's obviously had a huge impact on the way that I've spent or not spent money. Let's get on into it and we'll do the money diary first. <laughs> go back a month in March I had £14.88 left of my budget which rolled over into April which meant that I opened April with a budget of £264.88. In a completely unsurprising turn of events there's not a lot going on out of my budget this month so I spent £44.50 on experiences and services. Essentially what that was was my substitute hairdressing. So that was across two transactions, one at £21.50 and one at £23. So obviously with the current lockdown situation I can't get to the hairdresser as can nobody else. Um, so what I did was I bought a replacement of my Davines colour conditioner. I kind of toyed about with this because what I thought was that I could I could actually just not take that out of my budget because it was a replacement um, but where the sort of politics of it came into it was that although yes I had finished my last um, colour conditioner I hadn't actually been going to replace it. I kind of figured I could because it does an individual job in that it's got pigments through it that kind of brightens up your colour. It's different to any other conditioner that I own, it does perform a unique task and what I tend to do is use it sort of the last two weeks before my hair is about to get done again just to kind of keep the colour bright and things until I get to the hairdresser. But I had decided that essentially I was going to the hairdresser so the colour was kind of getting taken care of by the hairdresser. Yes I was sort of extending that at home with this product but ultimately what my thought process was was that this product replaced normal hair conditioner or a normal hair mask for me when I decided to use it and what I thought was I want to try and prioritise getting through the rest of my stash and um, particularly conditioner and um, shampoos and conditioners out of my hair care shampoo and conditioner are the two categories that are some of the biggest and because I do wash my hair so infrequently I wash my hair once a week I don't get a lot of chance to actually use these products so my thought process was I'm not going to replace that, I'm just going to, if my colour fades a little bit in between trips to the hairdresser then I just need to live with that and um, I'm going to try and use up some of my other conditioners. Now my whole thought process was of course that when I finished up my other conditioners, which probably it won't be until like next year at the earliest, maybe even the year after that, my thought process was that I would definitely bring the colour conditioner back into my life but that I wasn't going to do it at the moment. However, unprecedented turn of events and I can't get to the hairdresser so I decided I was going to then purchase that conditioner but because I had decided to make that purchase as a substitute for the fact that I actually couldn't get to the hairdresser and couldn't take care of the colour that way um, I decided it had to come out of my budget and it had to come out of you know and it was clarified as a cost that had sort of replaced the fact that I would have been at the hairdresser this month and I would have been spending 100 and whatever pounds and um, so I, I felt like I couldn't justify not taking that out of my budget because it wasn't a replacement item so much as it was a replacement service and the service would come out of my budget. So I hope that makes sense. Um, so the items in question. This is the other reason I had to, I decided this had to come out of my budget because um, I made a mistake and the whole point in doing my no buy in my budget is to try and make me a more conscious consumer and not make mistakes. I usually buy this straight from my salon which is a Davines salon and I googled the conditioner which is this one and um, so it's the Davines alchemic conditioner from natural and coloured hair and it's the copper one that I get that's what my my tub said on it. Basically nobody seems to sell the copper one like no 
sort of reputable cult beauty or whatever I bought this one from Liberty nobody seems to sell the copper one and I thought what had actually happened was that the copper one had been rebranded so I bought this one which from Liberty this was 21.50 this was for red hair and I thought they've maybe just gotten rid of the copper and called it red kind of thing so this arrived and um this turned my hair slightly pink so this is um it's not the copper one renamed it it is its own thing um so I just never used this one so I wasn't aware of that so that was kind of annoying because I don't I'm probably going to end up decluttering this or um if I can find somebody with a sort of brighter red hair than me um to pass this on to but it's very much that sort of pinky red tone it's not a coppery red tone um which is what is in my hair so I only got to use this well I didn't only get to use this I only used this once and was like okay not the right thing so then I ended up finding the copper one which is this one here so you can kind of see on the on the sides of the tubs that there is a difference between the red and the copper um but I found this on Amazon and it was £23 seller in question was selling a lot of Davines stuff I kind of took a risk because I don't I try not to shop with Amazon anyway for obvious reasons but particularly with cosmetics and things I just think it's safer to buy from a store that you know rather than a seller on Amazon but I decided to take the risk and this does seem to be legit and it looks and smells exactly like the one I would usually buy from the salon so if you can see the inside of that one it's much more coffee tone versus the the bright pink of this one those were my two products that I bought as you know a sort of substitute for my hairdressing obviously regret this one don't regret this one at all and I'm about halfway through this you don't because I, I have a lot of hair and I have long hair as well so so to be fair I go through this like a lot more quickly than somebody with a different length of hair would um, but I've used this twice and I'm about halfway through I think I'll either get two more full applications out of it or three sort of lighter applications so I, I do think you know I, I will finish this within the year and it won't hinder me too much in using up other conditioners so not ideal and I would have preferred to go to the hairdresser but this is the world we live in now. That was my £44.50 across two transactions on experiences and services. Unsurprisingly I spent no money on socialising at all. Also spent no money on food on the go because obviously you're only supposed to go to the supermarket once a week, do your weekly shop and come back so I've not been doing all the sort of top up trips that I was in the habit of doing before I started this project anyway. Also no money in taxis because I haven't been going anywhere. I did make one more purchase which was a book. I spent £2 and seven pence again with Amazon. God I'm uncomfortable with how much money I've given to Amazon this month. Um, £2 and seven pence downloading Normal People by Sally Rooney to my Kindle. I could swear I had the book um, but I can't, I can't find it anywhere so I had to spend the £2 and seven pence to download it um, because I wanted to read it before watching the TV adaptation. And I have read it and it is as brilliant as everyone says it is and I can't believe I definitely bought it because I remember buying it and I can't believe it took me this long to get around to it so I really really highly recommend it if you haven't read it yet. From my budget I spent £46.57 across three transactions however I had another three transactions that I made this month on replacements which were actual replacements so it was £103.49 in total on three items so those items were £14.99 on this from the Inky List which is their 15% vitamin C and EGF. EGF is the epidermal growth factor, I wanted to make sure I said that correctly. Basically this is my replacement vitamin C serum so I had finished up the Kiehl's one which I really like then I'd finished up the La Roche-Posay one which I really really like but it's in a squeezy tube and if it had just been in a pump dispenser that's probably the one I would repurchase because I really really liked it but I felt that I, I squeezed out far too much. That is generally the problem with La Roche-Posay products for me. I am too enthusiastic in my squeezing and too much product comes out and I go through it a little bit too quickly. Then after that I had the Pixie Vitamin C which was more of a watery brightening vitamin C and it was fine but I didn't love it. It was time to replace it. That was all my vitamin C serums. I used them all and I'd been going to go for the Kiehl's one 
but it is actually the most expensive of the three that I'd finished up and I thought I'm going to give this one a go. So I'd seen this in Boots before I'd finished my other one and I had been considering it. Basically at the moment because I had obviously just filmed my 2020 beauty rehab um, video and I want to try and reduce my collection um, by $3,000 for next year which $3,000 total not just using up $3,000 but also $3,000 on top of excess used up on top of any replacements that I buy if that hopefully makes sense so I thought I'm gonna give this a go because it adds less in especially just now because I am not at the start of the year but about what we oh, we're over a quarter of the way through the year actually for a third of the way through the year um but I, I'm obviously not at that $3,000 yet and I feel a bit uncomfortable about putting in expensive replacements unless they're totally necessary um, until I know that I'm definitely going to achieve that $3,000. So I decided to try this one out and so far I do really really like it. It's much more watery in terms of texture, it's much more akin to the Pixi one but I do feel it's doing a lot more for my skin than the Pixi one did. Both the La Roche-Posay and the Kiehl's one were quite sort of silicone-y which I didn't mind at all, that doesn't bother me. Um, but I know it bothers some people but I tend to use them at night so it doesn't really um, because I know some people talk about the sort of peeling effect of it if they're trying to then go in with makeup and it hasn't quite set or whatever. Um, but because I was using them as a nighttime serum, that wasn't really affecting me. Whereas this, it says you can use it day and night. I tend to prefer vitamin C at night because I'm, and I'm actually, I've been using this kind of either or because I'm actually missing my daytime serum at the moment. And that's something I need to replace, but I'll talk about that later. I have been switching about with this, but my plan is to end up using this at night and I, I do really like this. I, I would definitely repurchase it. The price point's great. I feel like as well, because it is that little bit more inexpensive, I know this sounds really silly, but I feel like when I've got a really expensive serum, and not that the Kiehl's one is ridiculously expensive or anything, but it is more expensive than this. Um, I will tend to concentrate it on my face and then sort of take the dregs of that down my neck. And I know I probably need to be a bit better at you know treating my sort of neck area etc with this i'm tending to do like a pump over my face and then another pump down my neck and giving my neck its own sort of dosage which i think is, is ultimately a good thing and the reason i'm okay with that is because this is less expensive so yeah um so far pleased with this as a replacement i spent 10 pounds 50 on this which is from the ordinary and this is their hyaluronic acid two percent plus b5 so i spoke about this i think in my empties video um because i finished up the glossier one that i bought when i went to london just before new year and i needed to replace that with a different hydrating serum so the glossier one i can't remember the price off the top of my head but i went through it really really quickly i just finished it mid-February so I finished it in like six weeks ish and that was 30 mils and it was whatever price it was. This is 60 mils so you can buy this in a 30 mil and I think the 30 mil is about the six pounds mark um but for the the 10 pounds 50 I decided to get 60 mil and I'm quite happy with this. Now there's there's nothing elegant about the ordinary which sounds very shallow but you can really tell that they don't spend money on their packaging and it, it feels clunky and not, it's just inelegant basically as a brand. The experience of using this isn't as nice in terms of A, the packaging, but also B, the actual serum. It's quite viscous, it's quite thick, it's quite sticky. But ultimately, the job that it does, I actually have, I said to Lauren the other day, like, my skin is in the sort of best condition it's been for a while and I do think it's because I finally sort of finished up serums that I'd been gifted or wasn't really too sure about or whatever and I replaced it with these three and I, I do think my skin is really happy with what I'm doing at the moment. So although this isn't the most elegant process or experience to have with skincare, it's definitely doing the job and it's, it's £10.50 so because it, the job and question is hydrating my skin it's such a basic function that I would rather spend £10.50 on it than spend a lot more money on it 
to get the same result even with a more elegant experience because I would rather put that money towards an elegant experience somewhere else. I then wanted, because I got the vitamin C and vitamin C can kind of irritate my skin, a product that I know that my skin works very very well with is Essie Lauder Advanced Night Repair. So, so this was the most expensive of the three products. Um, it was £78, this is a 50ml so it's the bigger size. This has just been a real cornerstone of my skincare routine for a very long time. It really, I get very sensitive skin, it soothes it down, it does help it repair. I do think there's more advanced serums out there and it's, it's almost annoying because I can't quite put my finger on what it is that this does but I just know my skin looks better when I'm using this and I knew introducing the vitamin C particularly what I was concerned about was the fact that this is a 15% vitamin C um, and the Kiehl's one I believe is 12.5% and that I can only use it every second night and my skin can react to vitamin C so I was quite cautious about introducing a 15% vitamin C um, and I wasn't going to do that without this so that was why I sort of tipped over into buying this again because I thought if my skin reacts this will soothe it down um, but yeah this just works for my skin I really really like it I feel really silly saying that because I can't quite put my finger on what it does and actually that vitamin C doesn't seem to have irritated my skin which is nice but I am very very pleased to have this back in my life so that was three products at £103.49 so counting that as six transactions and I spent a total all in this month of £150.06 and because I only spent £46.57 of my budget money which is my £250 I have £218.31 unused which then carries forward into May so I am opening May with a budget of £468.31 so to talk about that and the fact that I do have that bigger budget not because of my own discipline because if this month hadn't been what it was I would have definitely been at the hairdresser I would have definitely been out for dinner I'd have been socialising I it's not that I've chosen to save that money as such but I do have that bigger budget and it's providing quite an interesting sort of thing for me is that I'm a bit like how in theory am I going to spend this when we can get back out and we can spend it because I don't think I'll be doing any major spending this month even if lockdown does let up before the end of this month in terms of going back to work etc you know they are saying it'll be phased so I, I don't think by the end of this month we're all going to be back to going out for dinner or anything um so I I can't really foresee me spending any budget on anything other than books this month that's the only thing I can see me buying which means that potentially even going into June then I might be going into June with an even bigger budget I, I don't know now the things that I definitely want done I want to go to the hairdresser I know that sounds really really shallow but oh my god I just want to go to the hairdresser Um, I also want to get waxed and I'm so excited about that because I, I haven't really spoken about this before but I just hate shaving I hate it I would just rather pay to get waxed and it's just not been an option um, at the start of the year just in terms of the way my budget was spent I didn't have any money to, to go get waxed so I was having to shave at home hate it not into it at all I just want somebody to rip all my body hair out by the roots I want to feel it leave my body like oh I'm so excited to go get waxed um, what a masochistic thing to say but yeah I'm very very excited about that one of the things that I am thinking about this is kind of going off on a bit of a tangent but is that I do have my birthday present to myself in July which is you know still two months away but I'm thinking about it and at the moment the main things and ugh, this could change as well because there were things I was planning to buy in Florence under my holiday rules which I don't know at this point they still haven't cancelled our trip but I don't think I'm going to Florence in June so there were some shoes I was going to buy in Florence which might get added into this but the sort of main things I'm between for my birthday are a coat that I really want that I specifically want for going to New York at Christmas this year because it's 
just a really lovely Christmassy coat. I'll put a picture of it in. I, I was kind of torn between that, which again, I suppose we don't really know what's going to happen with travel even by like November, December. So maybe that's not the thing to buy, but I like this coat. I've liked it for a while. So there's the coat. But the other thing I'm thinking about getting as my birthday present to myself is one of those at home laser hair removal device things that I think it's a Philips one I've been looking at. If you've used any of them, can you let me know how they are? I had laser on my underarm and bikini line two summers ago go well not two summers ago two years ago um, and it was course of six treatments every six weeks and I didn't really find it made a massive difference um on my bikini line but I did find that it thinned the hair out under my arms it didn't ever get rid of it completely but it definitely did thin it out and I think maybe if I'd gone for a top up um three or four it might have got rid of my underarm hair completely but it's it's kind of it's hard to see completely objectively, but I think it's kind of more back to normal now. Um, and I, I've been toying about with the idea of getting another course of six. Probably not this year because I just don't think budget wise um, I would have that kind of budget to spend on a service. So pro probably next year, but I was thinking maybe to start that off or to bolster that. Is bolster the word? You know what I mean to like support that um it might my birthday present to myself it might be worthwhile getting one of these at home laser devices because I really hate dealing with my body hair I've got a slight hormone imbalance and the only way that that really affects me is probably that I have a terrible temper but that aside <laughs> um the only way it really affects my life is that my my body hair is very coarse and very strong it's one of those ones I'd quite like rid of it and it's it's such a annoying time consuming process which is why I'm like I'd rather get waxed and just hand it off to someone else and um, but when I was getting the laser done at the clinic you could only shave because the way that their laser worked it attacked the hair in a certain phase of growth blah blah I'm not really going to sit and pretend to understand the science of that and um, what is this Philips one that I've been looking at it says you can use hair removal cream you can shave or you can wax you just need to basically get rid of the hair and then use the device um so yeah if anyone's used it I realize this is such a tangent but if anyone's used any of those can you let me know like how you got on because I'm kind of doing that thing where I've been reading reviews online but I'm a bit like do I really trust these are these real people <laughs> that was the tangent about what I'm considering for my birthday gift at this point in May the start of May so we'll see what actually happens in July but right now that's what's kind of in the running but yeah in terms of like the whole body hair thing I'm just so excited to go get it ripped out by the roots as soon as we can get back to services and salons like that's what I want in my life I want to go to the hairdresser for the hair in my head and then I want to go to the waxer and get everything else ripped I'm so excited about it um so yeah there's there's those two but the other things I've said in the past like I'm interested in getting under eye fillers and that kind of seems like a something that probably wasn't going to happen until next year or whatever. Which is my bit like, hmm, they're about £500. Like, if this was to go on, which I think it will for this month, I'll be starting next month with enough excess budget that I could actually do that out of my budget, which I definitely wouldn't have thought I could have when I started this project. It feels a bit like cheating because when I started this project, I absolutely did not think hey you might go into lockdown where like you wouldn't be tempted to spend this budget at all or you're very minimally spending this budget and it's not really because you have decided not to but because the universe has dictated that you've not to and it's not really in a way it's not really me learning how to budget or how to control money it's just kind of like you don't have the option to do that right now so it feels a bit like cheating to be rolling this money over and be like oh I can do all these exciting things um but I think as well on the flip side of that having that little bit of extra money and being able to do those things without panicking that I'm not gonna leave myself enough money to like go out for dinner with my friends or whatever and um, it, it's just it's quite nice to be able to think about doing that and you know again I think it is all that thing of really assessing where you prioritize things so yeah, 
I don't really, I don't know. I hope that's vaguely interesting that I've just gone on a tangent about the way I'm feeling about planning to spend a future budget at this point in time. Um, I do think it's relevant because it might change and I think how it changes, if it changes, is is relevant to me assessing myself and assessing whether this is working for me as a project and whether it's I'm making the changes in my sort of mindset and approach to spending money that I want to be making and to kind of control or to monitor where my sort of instincts are going so that's where my sort of thoughts and instincts are going at the moment as a result of that sort of budget rollover and the situation. So to go back, I said I'm missing a daytime serum at the moment and I'm sort of between two and I know that I want one that's a new one that's actually the new Kiehl's one which I'm very interested in um, and one that's the Estee Lauder Idealist and technically I think I could probably get away with just buying both of them because they do kind of different jobs. Um, the Idealist is particularly good for pores um, which is my like main concern for using it as a daytime serum but the Kiehl's Vitality one's more like brightening and stuff I'm very interested but although I could technically justify them right now because I have finished all my other serums and I don't have a serum that does either function of those serums I am feeling quite overwhelmed with the amount of stuff that I've brought into my life this month and I think that's quite a good thing so in terms of what I've actually brought in, it's five items. Three skincare products, two hair care products, one, the rose, one is the one mistake out of those five. The other four, no regrets over. Do not, you know, very, very happy to have them in my life. But being in lockdown, I have realised how much my shopping is definitely a learned behaviour from my grandmother who has shopped a lot, a lot, I swear to god we get a parcel every day, it's ridiculous. Um, and she has bought me a few things this month as well so I'm not kind of going through this to show off, I just want to look at the quantity of this. So first of all she bought me this t-shirt because I really wanted it, it's one of the NHS charity t-shirts, it's the Peaky Blinders one. Yeah, I'm in love, it's like my favourite thing in my wardrobe at the moment so I, again, no, not that I would regret it anyway because it wasn't my money but I'm very very happy um, to have this in my wardrobe and I love it very much and it's how I feel about it, it's how I should feel about everything that I bring into my life in general. So I do love it, the only other thing and I said I wasn't going to like make lists of things that I wanted to buy but when I was trying to google this to show it to her I found another one on Etsy that had all the women from Peaky Blinders on it and it said let's go to the bull ring and it was in this like burgundy red colour which is just like one of my favourite colours and I really want that t-shirt so I really hope that Etsy seller is still selling that next year when I'm not in an opi anymore because um, my grand bought me this one because it was a charity t-shirt kind of thing. So she bought me this t-shirt, she also bought me two lipsticks so I bought uh, this can do one um, I bought this for my friend Lauren for her birthday and I was going on and on about them and it's basically when Lauren got this one she sent me a picture and it's much more pink than it kind of looked in the swatches and I was like but the other one's pink and blah 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 and I was just talking about them so much that I think she got bored of listening to me and just bought me the two of them even though I wasn't gonna buy them obviously because I'm on my no buy like I was just kind of talking about them and I I like the names, so one's called Can Do, but it's like Can as in C A W N E S Can. So Can Do and then Cote d'Amour, which I love. Um, so yeah, she bought me these two lipsticks. So that was my five items. This t-shirt six, seven, eight, and she also bought me some things from the Disney store for Easter. So I got three notebooks and some plates because, you know, plates, lads. I needed plates in my life and um, the plates I'm counting as one item even though it's a set of four plates but plates nine um, and then three notebooks 10, 11, 12. So 12 items entered my life this month. I feel really overwhelmed by that. There is not one of them other than that pink hair conditioner. There's not one of them that I want to give back or part with or 
have any regret over either buying or attaining but I do feel very overwhelmed by that. I'm quite glad about that because I feel like 12 items not that long ago would have very easily entered my life without even registering. The first month that I did this I had three things come into my life because I had the two things from m &S, the skirt and the top, I had exchanged the jumper for um, and I had a dress from ASOS that I bought using um, part of my Christmas voucher. So I had three things enter my life that month and sort of didn't really feel that much about it. It was just like, okay, whatever, three things. Then I had the shoes in February, which were my Valentine's Day present to myself under my rules. Um, so then in March I didn't have anything, I don't think. Nothing that's registering off the top of my head anyway. So I think March was nothing entered my life in March. Um, and then in April I've had 12 things and I feel like I'm just like no no more stuff please I feel really overwhelmed by that that's why I've not bought a daytime serum even though technically I have the space for it in both my life and my routine and I'm not spending any money so even though that doesn't even though replacements don't come out of my budget as such it's not like that money is going on anything else either because I'm not spending on other things that don't need to come out of my budget and um, you know obviously I'm paying my bills etc but it's it's not that there's something else happening that's eating into that money. I could buy both of those serums if I really wanted to under my rules and it would be fine but the idea of adding anything else to my current collection of things in my life is just like no like I like I don't want two more things. I think that's quite a good thing. I think that's quite a good way to feel because at this point what I'm thinking about for next year is more of a quantity based. So I think I'll continue my budget and I might move my budget around a bit and I'm kind of considering do I bring replacements in to be part of my budget or whatever next year. Um, so I, I will have a budget element next year as well but in terms of my no buy part of my year this year I want to replace that with something that I think is quantity controlled. The quantity I think to me is like the budgeting is important. I'm not sitting here saying like the money doesn't matter. The money does matter because I've spent far too much money in the past few years but it is more about the volume of stuff that I've got and I just want to own less stuff and love everything that I own and that's not to say, as I say, it's not to say that I don't love everything that's come into my life in the last month but I just feel really overwhelmed by that coming into my life even though I know that there's been months, that there, I mean there's been weeks in the past where I would have bought more than 12 items in a week and not thought anything of it. So I'm really really pleased that that shift has kind of happened and it's one that I didn't really know had happened because I haven't had a quantity of items enter my life like I have done this month for such a long, well not that long time but what feels like such a long time. So yeah that's just, I just kind of wanted to record that, that as much as I really like everything and I'm very grateful, um, obviously I don't want to come across not grateful for the things that I've been gifted this month. It just feels like a lot and um, it should feel like a lot. It's 12 things like it, it should feel like a lot but it just wouldn't have in the past in a way that it does now and I'm really glad that that kind of has apparently happened in my mind. So yeah I'm feeling quite smug about that. I don't know maybe smug's not the right word like encouraged. Feeling quite encouraged by that um, is maybe more the, the correct term. And I suppose it really kind of goes without saying just to formally say um, I haven't broke my no-buy, I haven't bought myself anything um, and I have no intention of buying myself anything at all. I don't feel particularly tempted to buy anything. Like the thing is even though I know I want this coat um, and I, I do want it, maybe this though this helps is that I've got this birthday gift to myself coming up in July and I do want this coat so there is in that sense an item that I want to come in and I'm thinking about the coat more as an item because I'm thinking about the laser hair removal thing more as a service even though it is an item but it's an item that 
does a job and would in theory replace the expense of going to get waxed etc etc so I'm thinking about that more as a service item rather than like an item that in terms of like with the coat like I know I don't need the coat I have other coats in terms of like laser hair removal device I don't have anything like that so that in a way feels like a much more justifiable purchase if I was trying to be thinking about it is justifying it but I'm not at this point I don't want to think about my birthday gift as being something I have to justify the whole point in having the three gifts so the Valentine's Day gift the birthday gift and Christmas gift was to have those sort of three moments where I could be as frivolous or sensible as I wanted to be without judging myself for that and giving myself that wiggle room to do that you know it was about making other things seem more bearable and about learning with myself how I prioritise things and what I would actually choose to buy against a no buy it's it's not to say that I wouldn't get the coat because I really want the coat um, and in a way the coat still feels a bit more urgent because it's the brand has carried it it's from a brand called British Retro um, and they've had it for over a year because I've wanted it for quite a while but just kind of never got round to buying it one of those things um, but it could get discontinued off their website at some point in a way that there's always going to be another laser hair removal device coming out and um, you know even if the one that I'm looking at becomes outdated or gets discontinued there will be an equivalent whereas the coat's a very specific item although I'm saying I'm overwhelmed by the amount of stuff that I've had this month and I'm a bit like oh I don't want to add anything else in I still do want the coat but I think that's almost because I know that it's two months away before I can get it anyway and it feels I think because it's a considered planned purchase it feels different to add that one coat in than it does to add in you know if my grand used to buy me a coat that I hadn't kind of picked or chosen in the way that even though the stuff that she bought me this month is stuff that I I didn't pick I didn't ask her to buy me the stuff but it's all stuff that I wanted as such so it's not like I've got a bunch of stuff that I didn't choose to bring into my life it's stuff that if I'd been buying and hadn't been doing my no buy I would have probably bought and in, brought into my life um so I'm probably not explaining that very well but I feel like if my gran was to buy me a coat I'd be a bit like oh I can't cope with this I don't want another coat take it away whereas like because I want this coat I'd be okay with bringing that coat into my life I don't I feel like that makes no sense um but yeah human beings are full of contradictions so there's my contradiction for how I feel about items coming into my life at the moment but yeah I think that's probably enough rambling on from me for now thank you very much for watching this I hope you're all keeping as well as you can keep I think this isn't super isn't super relevant but also kind of is I saw a thing that really really helped me on Instagram of all bloody places and it was a thread that somebody had posted and one of the things that they'd said in it was if you are losing sight of your long-term goals at the moment and you're not being productive with them don't worry about it because it's your mind knowing that focusing on short-term survival um, is better for you right now and I basically I'm going through a little I have days where I write and then I have days where I just can't seem to summon the will to it is relevant to the money side of this because I would I would like to be a writer as a as a job as a profession um, but I feel like one of the things I would really like to do is sort of take six months or something at some point and write for six months like save up money in advance to support myself um, and really give it a shot as though you know live my life as though I am a writer full time and have that money in the bank to not be worrying about the fact that I don't have an income because that is the ultimate problem with trying to be a writer is nobody's paying you while you're writing you know save up that money and give it a go and see what I can do in that time and I'm not going to do that if I don't learn to manage my money so that is that is why the money side of it is important and um, so it's it is linked to this project and um, and the other side of it as well is I think in terms of being productive you need to have the mental space to be productive and to focus and 
I think my mental space was so consumed by consumerism and wanting things and finding things to want and all the time that I was giving to that that I should have been the time and energy that I should have been putting into my writing instead um so it is I think reaching that goal is very intrinsically linked to this project um even though I'm not kind of specifically updating you about how any of my writing projects are going um through this but it's been very strange I've been very unproductive but I really I've I found that very comforting when I read it on Instagram that um, you know if you've lost sight of your long-term goals at the moment it doesn't mean you've actually lost sight of them so don't panic about it it's just your brain knowing that we're in this sort of pandemic and that short-term survival is the first port of call and um, so yeah I hope if anyone else is going through what I was kind of going through and being like why can I not do this all of a sudden and what's wrong with me and I should want to do this more than I want to like do other things that I'm doing with my time and um, apparently that's what it is and I find that very 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 helpful and very comforting so I hope it maybe helps one of you and um, but yeah stay safe take care of yourselves thank you very much for watching and I will see you in my next video bye